Hey guys, uh, hunting guys, world sunder, destroyed, or whatever you want to call me here, and doing episode two pretty much of this series that I just started. And we're following Scribbles again. And the reason for this is mostly because he requested it of me. Um, but, and I just guess I'll do something nice. I mean, he's kind of lucky because if this video series gets popular, I'm not expecting it to, but, but if it does and when it does, then if I get sent a ton of replays, I won't be able to do like follow-ups or anything. So I figure while I'm able to do them, I may as well just do a follow-up for Scribbles because he said he, he's trying to fix his problems here. So I'm going to watch, see if he does fix his, any of his problems, and um, that'll pretty much be it. I haven't seen what they said. I'll rush them now. Maybe it's true damage. 30 seconds until minions spawn. It's true. Um, thing is, with Corky, um, she does do true damage, but it is negligible. I mean, if Trin buys, it's actually mitigatable. If you buy a Thornmail, it is going to help, because Corky does percentage true damage based on the damage he does, I believe. This is as I remember. I have, don't quote me on this, I'm not entirely sure, but he does do true damage, but it's based on how much he ends up hitting you for. So if you mitigate his regular damage, he's going to do a percentage of whatever he ended up doing to you. I'm sure. So Thornmail will help. And Thornmail will help anyway, because a large part of his damage is 80 anyway. So even if you can't mitigate the true damage from it, like I think you can, um, then true damage, the, the Thornmail will still help. And you're leaning against GP, I think. Cloth Armor 5 is okay. Cloth Armor 5 is mostly okay just because um you're fighting GP with Cloth Armor 5. And thank god, you're not last you're you're not just throwing spears in the lane. That's really good. Don't push. Don't push on this GP. Bad things could happen if you did. Especially because he wasn't in lane, so the lane's gonna push anyway. Like, that's just not very lucky for you. Um, he got to lane late because he helped with blue. You should also probably be really wary right now, because him coming late means he helped get that blue, which means their jungler might early gank you. So it might have been worth it to start with traps or Q um, and play them. Like here and here, just, just to ward the jungler off, and even here. But you are putting traps down. You you are gonna wanna um this bush though, the tri bush. Actually I'm not sure that'll help. That's debatable. Cause you can mm, Trap's kind of easy to dodge in that tri bush. I don't know, we'll see. I mean I guess it's worth trying anyway. If you have the time to go back there and they won, you may as well just do it, but We'll see how that that ends up turning out, to be honest. I do wish you'd spend more time auto-attacking him. You do seem to be improving on your last things. You seem to have gotten more than you did last time, already. I don't see you missing as many as I thought I saw you missing last time. You started off with a lot of AD. The crap, is Nidalee's base just that high? 15 AD. Where did you get that from? I don't know what runes you're running, but that's a lot of AD. I I would run armor pen reds if you're running AD reds or something. AD reds will help you last hit. They'll make your last hitting a lot easier, but you're not going to be able to trade. Like, nothing scales better than armor pen on champions. You can have 50 AD at the beginning, and as long as your armor pen's higher, you're probably going to be doing more damage. More armor pen scales better when harassing champions. AD quints and armor pen reds are really what you're going to want to... is pretty much ideal for maximizing damage potential early game against a champion. But I don't know... If you want to passively last hit, that's good too. Oh, that's interesting. That's a kind of good idea to lay those traps there. 
That'll let you know super early if he's coming, though you still don't have that tri-bush done. And you're 33 to his 20. That's actually a significant lead. Though I still do wish that when you're not doing fighting minions, you can attack him. Don't be afraid to. He has five health pots, yes, and he has a cloth armor. But I mean, it'll still be worth it. Actually, that last hit did like nothing to him. It's gonna take a lot of hits to do anything. But usually with Nidalee, it's, it's just good to be attacking constantly. Because what you want to do is eventually force them into a position where they either last hit or they take damage from you. And you want to force them into a position where they don't want to take damage from you. So they can't last hit because they don't want you to hit them. Like, you want to force them into that position. I'm not sure if that made any sense. I'm hoping that really made sense. If it didn't make sense, I'm very sorry. I might have just spoken in gibberish. But yeah, after I said that, I was like, wait, did that make sense? So if it didn't make sense, I'm really sorry, but the point I'm trying to get across is zoning. And to zo for a zoning tutorial, I wouldn't really look at me. Um, there's already a really good zoning tutorial out there, and if I started talking about zoning right now, um, it would take a whole long time. So I'm not sure I really want to get into that right now. So if you want to learn a bit more about zoning, look up Shirelia zoning tutorial. And I'll put like an annotation with Shirelia. You should know how to spell Shirelia though. It's like Shirelia's reverie. Okay, if you just search like Shirelia tutorial zoning, you'll find it. Slain. Though that deals more with duo lanes, it's still basics. Like, you can still apply it to top lane. Pretty much you want to force him into a position where he doesn't want to come near the wave and you can just attack him. And for some reason, he only has one health bar right now. I think that glitched out, because I didn't see him use any. Oh, you have a lot more gold right now than you did before. Your last hitting got way better, I think, as, as far as I see. And you have a lot of lot of trap coverage, so that's good. I mean, if you if you don't have wards yet, that's amazing to have all those. And I've said before, last video I said this, and um, I got a tiny bit of flack for it. Not really, I just got one comment recently that I saw and I was a bit confused about. Ideal at 10 minutes is 100 CS. By ideal, I mean perfect. Meaning you didn't miss one. If you didn't miss one, you have 100 CS at 10 minutes. So pretty much, if I hit tab at 10 minutes and see what your CS is, that's going to be the percentage you hit. Last time, you were CSing around 50 to 60. So we'll see how you were this time. And you still have that Ignite Summon. Do know that Teleport is a really good um, spell for her. Because that Ignite's gonna help you in lane, but like, I think GP has Teleport, right? Yeah, he has Teleport. The thing is, if you guys start Baron, you have like a ward there, or Dragon, I mean. Fuck, Baron, what? This is not Baron. If you guys start Dragon or something, and you have a ward there, he can Teleport, and you're stuck up here alone, and your best option is to push that tower down. And I mean, if a team fight happens there and you lose it, then that sucks. Your team should know enough to not fight if there's a GP teleporting in, but 
you can't always count on that. They, it'll happen that they will be confused and blame you and be like, why are you still farming top nearly when actually what you're trying to do is push that down? They just see that as farming. And that's an unfortunate situation. I mean, it sucks when your teammates start doing stuff like that, but whatever. It happens. Seems like your team has gone 3-3 three, three with them so far. You're doing a decent amount of damage to this GP. But yeah, main thing I'm seeing right now is just that, like, in Cougar, you did a lot of harass. But right now, I'd say you have better harass than you did in Cougar, which is just auto attack, like that. If you just keep doing that, he'll eventually get pretty low. Cougar's great for harass, yes, but, I mean, you can just poke all day with Well, these traps are everywhere right now. It's looking awfully tasty if their jungler comes to gank you. The only problem? Ooh, major problem. I didn't notice this until just now. You do still have to be careful. Nocturne does have a spell shield, and those traps are visible. So, he can just spell shield the trap. That Annie made pretty good play. Sorry, if people messaging me again. John, 11 minutes, you have 91. This is actually really pretty decent CS right now. You're CSing pretty well. Like, your, farming, your farm got way better. Way better. Like, you're almost 3,000 gold right now. That's almost a bloodthirster. So yeah, that's a lot of gold. I didn't see if that GP came back with a ward or not. I think he might have. And if he did, you really need to pay attention to that. No, he didn't, because he came back with health pots. That's what it was. That's what was in this slot. I forgot what was in this slot. Though I'm not sure if you did, so I'm still going to say it. Um, whenever somebody first comes back to the lane, like, at all, when they first make their way back to the lane, look at their items. And if they have wards, notice that. And along with noticing it, if you see that ward disappear from their inventory at any point, let your jungler know. Oh, you switch focus okay there. I was a little worried. Just because fighting that Ezreal looked kind of dangerous. Oh, that Annie. She real risky. That was not worth it for your team. Now GP has doubled up. Yeah, fighting that Ezreal was looking a little suicidal to me. I didn't know about that, but you did switch focus pretty well and killed Nocturne, so that's good. Like, I probably would have just gone straight for the Nocturne if I was going to go for anybody anyway. Thirteen minutes, you're at about a hundred. That's fine. That's not bad, so yes. I'd say that's, like, decent to good. You're somewhere between, like... You're around good. Like, it's not excellent, and it's not perfect, obviously, but it, it's decent. Good, even. Whatever I'm, whatever I'm saying right now, I don't even know. I'm focusing on your CS off a lot, mostly because nothing's really happening in this lane. This is really a farm lane right now. Not as many situations popping up in this fight, though, which is interesting. I think the reason this lane has become such a farm lane 
is because GP isn't leaving either. If GP left, that that actually opens up a lot of options for you. Because not only does that open up the fact that like you could run down, help your team with something, or I mean, secure an objective or something, it could mean GP is about to help his team kill your team. Like, all sorts of things could happen. And I sort of want to see how you would react to that. Because that would help more than just what's happening right now, which is two people fighting in a lane. And it's been like that the entire game. Um, there's not too much I can comment on as far as game making decisions, which is why this you might not be getting as much from this as you did from the last one. That's an okay ward. I'd put it somewhere closer to here, though. Like, this ward placement, the only problem with that is you're going to see to here. You don't know if he's coming out of here. So if you put it, like, right there, you can see this entrance and over there. And I'm missing a fight. You're taking damage. Oh, you're just trading, but you're trading well, so that's okay. Um, and you can take tower shots as long as you heal them, so that's awesome. And you did. This is a little crazy. An ally has been slain. An enemy has been slain. I got Trinda kills, so that's good too. Yeah, put that closer to here just because you'll be able to see, like, ideally this ward, when you place a ward, should see part of this entrance, like, up to here, and it should also see, like, around here, so that you can tell if they're coming out of this bush. In that case, you'll always know if you're getting ganged from, like, these directions. That ward should see everything. I got Ezreal win AP, which is kind of a really sad build. He only has 60 CS, too. 17 minutes, 135, highest in the game. You're doing pretty well. No joke. You probably should have called him Mia. I'm not sure you did. Yeah, you called it after he was down here. Just so you know. It's not too big a deal, but it's kind of big. But at least you're making up for it. When you call a Mia, you have to do one of two things. Follow where they went, or push their lane hard. And you seem to be doing that. So that's good. You're making up for lack of Mia by pushing super hard right now. Because while they just got a kill or two, I don't know how many they got. First, your trade, I think, was 2-1 to one down there. Um, But... You did get a turret for that, and that's huge. So, turret's big for your whole team. It's 150 gold to everybody. And that's a good okay ward. Can't gank in Italy. She has flash, there's no way. Yeah, now that that's towers down, you can go roaming. You might still want to farm a bit, like anytime you can get the chance, like say you saw those creeps mid, you could have killed those. Like farm is constant. If you see farm and nobody's around to take it, take it for sure. The only reason you wouldn't take it is if something was like imminently going to happen that you needed to be at. Like say you saw a fight was about to happen down here and it was something you would need to be at or your team would lose, then you go in. Um, or you could tell your team really wanted to initiate or something. If something like that was about to happen, yeah, go down here, that's fine. But like, that fight wasn't necessarily going to happen. That farm could have been more useful than what just happened down here. 
which actually was nothing. So right now you're wasting a bit of time. If nothing comes of this, you wasted time. Dragon might come of that, though. <clears throat> Dragon's good. But you still could have cleared, like, two waves there. Two waves of gold that was just missed by everybody. But it seems like you might have been warded, too. Because as soon as you left, they initiated, so that's also pretty bad. Your team should have let you know that you were warded or something. Oh yeah, they definitely know. And securing dragon for your team is really good. Um, it got a little dangerous when it looked like... Yeah, when it looked like Ezreal was, um... Like, about to come over and Corky flashed over, that was a bit dangerous. Nope. That as Nidalee, your takedown has percentage health damage, like, I believe yes, right? Increase against wounded targets, 300%. So 159 times 300, that's pretty much a spike. So note that if you're if you're trying to make sure you out-DPS a dragon, Cougar form's probably the better form to stay in. Especially because you have Wriggles, it's gonna proc on your auto attacks. So, it probably would have been better for you to just stay in Cougar and try to queue it to death. But I don't know, you still got it, so that's good. Yeah, and as long as your team's winning in other places, farming is really good. Like, farming as much as you possibly can is good. As much as it sucks that the game can get boring that way, um, you do want to be farming as much as you possibly can. Like, as much as humanly possible you want to farm. An ally has been slain. So, like, unless your team's going to get in a position to mess up, keep farming. Farm will never betray you. Like, that's... The, the number one rule of League. Your farm will never betray you, where your teammates might, in solo. And I mean, that sucks to say, but it's true. You might have a teammate troll. If they do, whatever. If you have the farm to make up for it, that's really good. If they don't, that's amazing. That's pretty damn awesome. The farm's still really good. So really, as, as long as... Like, keep farming as much as you possibly can. But do be careful if your team's about to get in a fight that they can't win without you. Like, that's a huge problem. Rampage. If you think, like, right now, you should be paying attention to this. I see you're not, because their health bars are invisible. Yeah, you should be paying attention to mid and being like, hmm, should I go help, should I not go help? It doesn't look like you needed to in this case. Karma, okay. Um... Because I know last video, when you when they were pushing down there, I told you not to come. The reason I said not to come was because you were already here, and they were, like, down there. This time, you were here, and your team was right there. You didn't have much travel distance, and they were getting into a fight that they really couldn't win without you. We're in a situation where you're pushing this tower, and they're at bottom over here, that's such a long distance to travel, you won't make it. So you may as well just keep pushing. It's really a gamble. You have to think about what you want to do in those situations. Like In that situation, I would have been paying attention to mid, though I couldn't see their health bars that entire time, so I don't even know if I would have gone as Nidalee. So I can't tell you what was the right choice there. Um, but if you had been 
you should have been looking. And if you thought it was a fight that you could join, join it. Because then you can team push down this tower and then go push down this tower or this inner tower. And that's a bigger play than just getting half of the health on this one. Though that was a good play. I'm not discount crediting the fact that you did push this pretty far. All I'm saying is you really do need to weigh the situation out and be like, while you're pushing this, move your camera over and be like, hmm, what's their health at? What's the enemy team's health at? And then go back to yourself. Like, you just have to make judgment calls on the fly. I couldn't tell what, what judgment was the good one there. So you might have made the right choice. I just don't know. I didn't see... I couldn't tell because the replay doesn't show your teammates' health unless you actually, in the game, had moused over them. Twenty-four minutes. CS is about two hundred. That's really good. You're doing really good on CS right now. Like your CS is good. You picked up a whole lot, and you have three kills and three assists. So. That's big. You're really far ahead right now. I'd say against this GP, who's 148. You're 60... You're 50-ish ahead. Almost 60. Um, and then you have, what? Um, 20... Has been slain. Plus about... You have about 10 extra. So you have about, what? 70 CS of gold more than him? Kills and cysts included. See, and you're a push monster right now. That's really good. As long as your team's not messing up, this is good for you. Like, look at that. You came out so strong because you had so much farm in that lane. Oh, well, they surrendered off of that. Alright, yeah. If I was about to, um... Victory. If I was about to give you any critique there, your CS got a whole lot better. The things you needed to shape up on mostly were just your, um, that ward spot. You need to change it a tiny bit. It's it's a bit off of, like, ideal. Um, the fact that you weren't looking at your teammates in mid when they were doing that fight worries me a bit. But, like, you need to do that. You need to be looking, you need to weigh your options after you look. Like, it did depend on what their health was at right then. Um, and I couldn't tell. So yeah, you need to know what their health is, if you can go, if you can't go. And you need to weigh those options before you just keep pushing. Um, and then, on top of that, what else did I notice? Um, I think those are the two main things. That one word placement. Oh, objective control. And, like, helping your teammates out, um, you might want to take teleport. Because I didn't really see you use Ignite that much. You might want to start taking teleport. You might want to try it out. Um, you might not like it. You might like it. Who knows? Um, it is really useful if your teammate's laying wards. Because you can teleport into, like... There's little tricks. Like, if there's a ward in the bottom brush behind the enemy, you can teleport to that ward and, like, be behind them all of a sudden. Um, if there's a ward at Dragon, you can teleport to that and gank them. If there's a ward at Dragon, you can teleport to that and start a dragon fight. Like, it, teleport will help you a lot. Um, just be, I don't know, taking it, it really summoners are up to you. Um, they are personal preference. So if you really like Ignite, take Ignite. If you get really comfortable with it, and like, it's something you succeed with a lot, take it. I don't care. Just, um... Teleport might be better for you. Just try it out. Don't know. Because there were a couple times in that game where I was like, hmm, teleport might be good right now. Can't tell because I'm not seeing the teammate's health. Don't know, but... Um, yeah. So be looking at your teammate's health. Be looking at all their progress. See if they need help with, from you. And join if you think um, it'll turn into something good. If you think it can't turn into something good, keep pushing. Um, if your teammates are making stupid decisions or getting initiated on, that's something that's going to happen. Uh, keep pushing there if you think you can do it safely. But if your team's like kind of wandering around, look like they want to start a fight or something, and you're not there, 
and you think they're going to lose the fight without you, but, like, go there. Or if you think your being there will get you a lot of kills, go do that too. The only problem with the last game, when I saw the Akali, was she ran up. She got out of vision. We, you had no idea where she was. And then you also were at the top inner turret, and you ran all the way to bottom to go do it, which is a huge amount of time. And she ran out of vision, so you had no idea where she went. You just got really lucky that last game that she was in that brush. So that's what I was more critiquing you on when I said push it. Cause, and the only reason I'm mentioning this is just because I'm afraid because I told you, no, 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 keep pushing that last game. Um, this game, you became a push monster without paying attention to your team. And you really need to find a medium for that. There is a medium, like, like you do need to be paying attention to your teammates and what they're doing. So that's big. But otherwise, you, you played a way better game that game. Um, so yeah. Uh, I guess that's it for this one. I finished, I did set a whole lot on Victor's screen. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I guess I'll get this rendered, uploaded, and I'll post this in your thread, I don't know. But um, that's it for the second episode of this series that I'm doing, and that's Scribbles number two. So, thanks guys, uh, rate, comment, subscribe, do whatever you want, it's, it's cool. Um, I will see you guys later, maybe with a different player, um, Maybe with Scribbles again? I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, if Scribbles really wants me to do another one, if I have time, um, I might do it. If I don't have time or I have a ton of other replays, I'll try and make those the priority because, of course, we don't. I know it, could, it would suck if all I was doing was replays of Scribbles. And it's not fair to anybody else who sends me a replay to just keep favoring this one guy. Um, so, yeah. If I get sent more replays, I will look at those. Um, I'm going to put a how to send replays to me in the description, so you can look at that. Uh, and yeah, I will see you guys next time.